and Rebecca is going to start this off. Where are you, Rebecca? Their parents are sitting there like shocked. But 
We won a couple games out of 20, so that was great. Uh, so, yeah, growing up, Eli was quite the looker, some of you guys know. <laughs> Eli had a bullet from the 80s. It was beautiful, beautiful. He had his transition glasses that were, you know, pretty thick, and then when he walked outside, they changed into sunglasses, which was super cool in the late 90s. And then, of course, he had his braces, which was good. The reason for these beautiful teeth now. So, <laughs> uh, Eli was a very happy kid, despite his looks. <laughs> If there's a picture on the table of back from then, you guys should try to find that because it's, it's good fun. Right there, I think we got one. Awesome. <laughs> um, I have a story that my dad tells, which is really describes just how much of a happy little kid Eli was. My dad was babysitting when Eli was about two, and my dad goes in to take a shower, therefore ignoring Eli for a couple minutes. So Eli busts into the shower while my dad is showering and slams in the glass door to the shower. To the shower. And it shatters everywhere and completely cuts my dad's foot open, almost cut his foot off. And my dad is standing in the back of the shower, furious at my brother, right? This little two-year-old Eli is sitting here. And then Eli starts laughing at him. So my dad says the only reason he didn't kill Eli that day was because Eli started laughing. <laughs> but yeah, Eli was always a little smiler, being a very happy kid. Um, Eli has grown into a brave, courageous, kind, caring, helpful person for all of you that know him. Um, I have another story about when we were climbing a 14er, uh, peaks over 14,000 feet. Me and my dad and my brother have done 16 of them, I think now. So we were up on what's called Mount Bross. That's right outside of Alma, Colorado. You guys know where that's at. Um, my Uncle Bob was there too, up here front. For those of you who've heard this story, I'm really sorry, because they're so sick of it. But we climb up Mount uh, Bross, and we decide that we're gonna climb to Mount Cameron that same day, which is just a saddle cross away, you know? 300 feet down, about a mile over, 300 feet back up. So we climb to Mount Cameron, and the clouds start rolling in. And eventually, before we know it, it is a full-blown blizzard hailstorm on the top of this mountain. So we're 14 miles up in the middle of nowhere, just getting thrashed by the weather. And I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> and then we start to realize that we have another problem, which is Eli takes his hat off, a baseball cap, right? And the center metal pin in his baseball cap is bright red, orange, glowing. And that is because of the electricity in the air. It's called St. Elmo's fire. It's when you catch yourself inside of a lightning storm. So the clouds are all around you, you can just feel the static electricity in the air. Creepy, right? <laughs> so, you know, we can't get it within a foot of each other without being shocked by this electricity that's in the air. So me, Bob, my dad, and Eli all spread out as far as we can. Nobody panic, we can't see anything because it's a complete blizzard. It's not like we're about to walk off a cliff that's 400 feet tall or anything like that. I'm like 13 at the time, panicking. And so our GPS system is going berserk. Like it's a state of the art at that time, electronic GPS, going crazy, which is something you would expect from a normal compass or something like that, not from this satellite equipment, you know. So Eli led us off the mountain that day, point of the story. And, you know, we all just decided at one point, just trust Eli. He thinks he knows where he's going, so we'll just follow him. <laughs> and sure enough, yeah, he got us down the mountain, and it was just one of the times where I was really sitting there like, 
you know, what would I do without you? <laughs> you had the heart and the courage, even like in a situation like that, which was insane. So, I love you. So, for those of you who don't know, me and Eli lost our mother, and my dad lost his wife in 2010 due to a completely out of the blue heart attack. Uh, it was really sad, and it was just, yeah, completely out of nowhere, no one knew it was coming, anything like that. And, you know, she would have loved to be here tonight, which, you know, any mother would like to see their kid get married. But we all really pulled together in that time, and we became a stronger family, you know, with our entire extended family, too. And I just, you know, we became a lot closer. And Annika, she would have loved to meet you. I'm so sorry that you guys didn't get that chance. But definitely take my word for it. My mom would have loved you. <laughs> and she would be so happy for you guys right now. And she is here right now. So. So, another toast. Did everybody finish their champagne? Yeah. I think I was supposed to toast again. So, another toast to Eli and Annika and their happily ever after. Of their dreams. 
And when they do, you know that they're not just beloved, but now they can go out into life and be loved. And Eli, thank you for loving your daughter, because I should not be happy. So, Thank you. 